Hello and welcome to the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host Armin Simonian. If you've been following this Pharmacy Informatics series, you know that we started with some computer basics and we talked about databases and database structure and the fact that our electronic health records are really huge database systems. Once we get off of paper and we have these all-inclusive EHRs, we can do some incredible things. And one of them is electronic prescribing. So let's get into our presentation for today and get to the topic. We're talking about computerized provider order entry and e-prescribing. Let me go back to the beginning of the presentation and start with what is CPOE? So we used to call it computerized physician order entry and then it became prescriber order entry. And now we've kind of landed on provider order entry. And CPOE is really in the inpatient setting. It's electronic ordering of all kinds of uh, medical services. And this includes medication orders in the inpatient setting. So again, back at the beginning, we had paper charts and then we moved to these financially oriented uh, systems for charging for different services. And then we saw the uh, advent of departmental systems. And then of course we went to the clinical realm and this is where we started having these all-inclusive integrated electronic health records. And once we have the EHR in place, then we can do things such as CPOE. So why do we wanna do electronic prescribing? Well, number one, it reduces medical uh, errors. So with prescriptions or medication orders, it eliminates the issues with illegible handwriting and also eliminates the need to call in like we used to do in the old days, uh, verbal uh, prescriptions or orders over the phone. Okay. Then we can also improve patient care through the application of clinical decision support, which is gonna be the major topic uh, for our next episode after this episode eight. Decreases in uh, delays uh, in order completion. So the whole process becomes more efficient and quicker and the provider can provide the prescription or enter it at any point of care or offsite computer. And it just simplifies a lot of uh, issues that we have in pharmacy and providing medications, such as inventory control, charging and formulary compliance. So with ordering, we can dive a little bit deeper and talk about limiting choices that we present to the provider kind of guiding them uh, with the proper prescribing of medications. And then we can apply clinical decision support, which I will talk about in episode nine, where we check for allergies and interactions and do dosage range checking other uh, great uh, clinical decision support. And then there's also patient safety. So we're doing the five rights. We're identifying the patient before we prescribe the right drug to the right patient. And then we can have customized dosing based on a pediatric or adult or neonatal population. And um, order confirmation and review can be immediate. As soon as the order is entered into the computer, the pharmacist can be there verifying the order. We also have some benefits from a management perspective in terms of doing data analytics and also with billing and coding. So what is e-prescribing and how is it different from CPOE? Well, you can think of e-prescribing as CPOE for ambulatory patients, and this would be in the retail or community or independent pharmacy setting, or even in a clinic uh, setting. And then um, this is a little bit different than what we do in the hospital because when we're filling prescriptions in the community setting, we're really a lot more focused on uh, third-party billing, insurance programs, and making the right choices on the exact product that is used. So what are the components of e-prescribing? We have a prescriber, a dispenser, and then this company called SureScripts, which is kind of an intermediary in terms of connectivity. And then we have an interface standard. We talked about HL7 in the past. This is more for um, e-prescribing for prescription and it's called NCPDP script. This is National Council for Prescription Drug Programs and this is the standard that they have. 
And then we've talked about databases and the importance of building databases and the pharmacist informaticists be involved uh, intimately with the building the drug databases and other um, large files that are used in our systems. So with e-prescribing, we have these drug pharmacy user, patient, medication insurance plans and formularies and the medication profile for the patient. So this graphic and the next one kind of shows you how it all works. Um, there's a prescriber that enters an order and it can go to a, another computer system that acts as a server and sends that prescription through to SureScripts, which then sends it to the pharmacy and the benefits provider. In the larger medical groups or hospitals, that software that transmits the electronic prescription is built right into the electronic health record or EMR, electronic medical records, and then it kind of follows the same pathway with getting to the pharmacy and uh, the benefits payer. So remember, we have to review every medication order before the first dose is given or administered or taken by the patient. So with CPOE and our uh, EHRs, we have that immediate notification that there's a new order and then we can check that order. Once we check that order, remember it can be interfaced to our automated dispensing cabinets, which again, we'll talk about automation in future sessions, but um, that's one of the most used uh, automation devices within our acute care setting. And pharmacist verification of CPOE orders can result with that order going through an interface to the appropriate machine, allowing the nurse to remove that medication and administer it to the patient in a timely fashion. So the Joint Commission, when they say uh, mid-order review, they're really referring to a lot of things that we all should be looking at when we review these med orders. So patients' allergies and sensitivities, interactions, the right dose, you know, the five rights, basically labs, if they're relevant to the therapy, uh, we should look for any duplicate therapy, uh, other contraindications based on comorbidities, variations of hospital-improved indications, and then um, we can clarify any concerns that the prescriber or provider has. With SureScripts and this electronic prescription or e-prescribing that happens in the community, or outpatient setting, um, SureScripts is providing the prescription, but it doesn't necessarily uh, link up exactly with the pharmacy system. So there is a little bit of work on the pharmacy side to make sure that everything links up properly. So we have to pick the right product, translate the instructions, make sure that that is showing properly on our pharmacy system, and then uh, make sure that we have the right patient, of course, and that it's linked to their profile. And then um, we still want to do our verification of all the components of the prescription. So in summary, yes, CPOE and e-prescribing are great. Once we have our EHR in place, we can do this. And once we have the attention of the provider during the prescribing of a medication, we can really provide some guidance and support through clinical decision support, order sets, and other uh, methods. So we can reduce medical errors with getting rid of handwriting and call-in prescriptions. We can improve patient care by guiding the prescriber to make sure that they're prescribing the medications in the best possible way. And then we can make the whole prescription filling process a lot more efficient. All right, so that does it for the module on CPOE and e-prescribing. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And in the next segment, I'll be talking about clinical decision support. But for now, I'll thank you and I'll say stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others, and hope to see you next time. Take care.